2019 is your year of restoration. Just think about that for a minute. Let it, let it sink in. That is God's promise to us as a Temple of Praise Church family in 2019. This is a year of restoration. And uh, last week, uh, Pastor Tani was saying, what will 2019 look like? He was talking about our dreams and our plans, and we reminded ourselves before about aligning our plans with God's plans, and, and also looking out for discouragers, people that will discourage us from, from along the way, and, and making sure that we find people that will encourage us throughout the year in God's plans. And so God has promised us a year of restoration. So I'm going to borrow what Pastor Tani said last week and said, what will our year of restoration look like? Now, there's a dictionary definition of restoration. It means to restore to a previous condition, to repair renovate, return to a former state, replace, re-establish, and reinstate. And that's the, that's the top picture. You can see the two halves of that table, the, the former and in its disrepaired state, and then somebody's lovingly restored that table uh, on the other side to, to its former state of glory. But I'm gonna encourage you this morning God is the expert restorer. And he's a bit more like the bottom two pictures. There is a, um, the biblical aspect of restoration. Very often, the final state is greater than the original condition. And um, there's a television program never watched it called pimp my ride <laughs> and then um, and and where so, somebody has a car and they hand it over to the experts and they say pimp my ride and uh, during the course of the program their car is turned into something wow and wonderful with all sorts of lights and shenanigans going on in the boot and, and whatever whatever right and then uh, this year we could say to God who is our restorer, pimp my ride, right? Because he is, um, and I'm not being disrespectful to Amen. God in Amen. any way, and uh, because God is the expert restorer. And when he takes us on an area of our lives mm. and he restores it, it's wow, mm. it's fantastic. So what would restoration look like? What would it look like for you individually? What would it look like for your family? What needs to be restored? What would restoration look like for us as the family of Temple of Praise? What would it look like in our church, in our ministry areas? What would restoration look like? And what would restoration look like for our community? Because when God speaks restoration, it's not just about you individually or us as a church. Ultimately, it's about restoring all things to himself. So what would restoration look like in our community? And it's important at the beginning of the year to think carefully about those things so that we can work with God and partner with him to, so that that restoration that he wants to bring will happen. What sort of things are restored? Things that have become worn or jaded over time? Things that have been neglected? Things that have been broken? Things that have been lost or maybe waylaid? You never received them in the first place. They were destined for you, but they just didn't get there, like missing post. Things that have been stolen, 
Now, in the Church of England prayer book, they have a, a sentence that, that talks up when they're talking about asking God to forgive them, but they talk about through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. And there are areas of our lives that, that, that need to be restored because we've been negligent or weak or our own deliberate fault has, has, messed, them, has messed them up. But we can have physical, spiritual, emotional, mental, relational types of restoration. There's no boundary that God can't cross to bring restoration. And often when he brings restoration, he will tackle many of those areas, if not all of them. So when we were in the seven days uh, time of prayer, and fasting at the end and the beginning of this year. Uh, God spoke to us at length from, from Jeremiah and, um, and, and we, we read passages from Jeremiah 29 right through to Jeremiah uh, 33 and, uh, and I'm not going to read them all this morning because we haven't got time but I would encourage you to read through those passages at home uh, but I'm just going to su summarise some of the things, the promises that God says about restoration in, in, those, in those chapters. He said, it's on the next one, yeah. Freedom from captivity. What things have held you back, have, have held you down in the past? God says that he will give us freedom from those things that have held us captive. He says in Jeremiah that we'll have peace and security that our enemies will be exiled. Those things that have worked against us, that he'll remove them far from us. Health and healing. Restoration of land, of fortunes. He promises abundance. He promises prosperity. He says there'll be an increase in numbers. Praise the Lord. No empty seats in temple of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Those that are asking for children, Praise the Lord and increase in numbers even in your own families. Honor. He said the community will be established. That's a phrase taken straight from Jeremiah and one that we can hold on to, that this community will be established, that our communities will be established. He said that well, there'll be joy, there'll be comfort, there'll be fruitfulness, he said, my people will be filled with my bounty. He said, there will be level paths. Do you know what that means when the path is level? That it's, it's easier to go, to go along. It's not a struggle. He said, your children will return to their own land. He said, I will refresh the faint and the weary. And he promises forgiveness. No, our season of restoration has already begun. We're halfway through January. So we're already half a month into our season of restoration. Amen. And I want to encourage you this morning that your case is not too difficult for God. Now, sometimes we can look at an area of our lives or look at something that needs to be restored and think that is just so overwhelming. But your case is not too difficult for God. In Jeremiah 32, verse 27, he said, I am the Lord, Hallelujah. the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? I want to encourage you this morning. When I was reading, often um, it's spiritual restoration that precedes, that comes before other types of restoration. When we read in the Bible about people restoring the altars of, of, of the Lord, of, of restore, rebuilding walls, re repairing the temple, those things 
rebuilt, repairing the altars, rebuilding the temple. They usually came before a time when other things would be restored, when God would restore his people to himself, gather them from exile, bless them, give them fruitfulness, give them abundance and peace and security. All those things would follow times when the people had spent time clearing the altars, cleaning the altars, repairing the temple, re rebuilding, rebuilding walls. And on the very first day that we gathered to pray over the seven days, God uh, gave us a word that was similar to that from Revelation um, chapter 22, uh, verses 12 to 16. It was the last words of Jesus that are recorded there. And, and, and he says, blessed are those who wash their robes. And we were being encouraged that night to, to not physically wash our, our clothes, you know, we don't need personal and dads for this type, right? But to make sure that, that we're standing right with God. The, anything that would disrupt our closeness with God, our intimacy with God, you know, that we deal with that so that there's no obstacles between us and God, so that we're standing right before God, so that God can have clear access to do what he wants to do with us in our lives. So I encourage you to make sure that you wash your robes in 2019. In Psalm 4 it says, offer the right sacrifices and trust the Lord. In Deuteronomy, if you read Deuteronomy chapter 30, it talks about when you do this, then he will restore. So let's make sure at the beginning of the year that we're right with God. In Psalm chapter 51, it says, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Let that be our song at the beginning of the year. Amen. So, as Pastor said last week about our dreams and our plans, just sit back and wait for restoration.